So lately, my YouTube feed has been filled with these iceberg deep dives. So I spent a lot of time looking at them. And by looking at them, I mean watching videos of people explaining them because I'm too lazy to actually read them myself. I then got curious for an iceberg for a series that only I care about. Hero Factory was a Lego construction theme that started in 2010 and ended in 2014. Unlike most retired Lego themes like Rock Raider Space and especially Bionicle, Hero Factory seems to be Lego's black sheep in comparison with no real big cult audience. However, I have found some interesting stuff that not a lot of people seem to know about this series. So grab your Swedish fish, pour yourself a cup of Mountain Dew, Put the Swedish fish inside the Mountain Dew because you hate yourself. And worship your nearest sexo as we explore the Hero Factory Iceberg. In 2009, LEGO realized that their classic action figure theme Bionicle has started to decline in sales. LEGO decided to pull the plug on Bionicle, and the first series ended in 2010. Hero Factory was made as a response to what LEGO thought was wrong with Bionicle. Bionicle's story was a major barrier for entry due to the fact that it was a long-running narrative that, when it ended, lasted for 10 years. Hero Factory, by comparison, had no big overarching plot. Meaning that if you were just getting into the series, you wouldn't need knowledge of the past to enjoy it. The story wasn't the only thing that LEGO addressed. A lot of the Bionicle sets had a very gritty and messy look to them, while Hero Factory sets had a much more clean, consistent, and smooth look to them. When Hero Factory launched in 2010, it was not met with very open arms. There are two main reasons for this. The first reason was because it was Bionicle's replacement, and as such, fans of Bionicle chose to boycott the series. And the launch sets were nothing too special. The heroes were modified Avmatoran builds, and for those of you who uh, don't know, Avmatoran builds are considered to be the worst Bionicle sets. And the villains, while having cool designs, were very flawed figures. Most of them had these hollow limb pieces and couldn't move their arms. In 2011, LEGO decided to overhaul their action figure building system. The Character Creature Building System, or CCBS for short, was much more durable and flexible than the old system that Bionicle used. CCBS can be broken down into three different systems. A Bone Skeletal System, a Shell Armor System, and a Pig Armor System that you would put on the shells. The primary source of media people know Hero Factory for is the show. Each set wave would get their own episode, with 2010's Rise of the Rookies having four parts. Throughout Hero Factory's run, there were nine main characters. There was the Alpha Team leader, Stormer, Bulk and Stringer, who were Stormer's right-hand men, Burno, the up-and-coming rookie, who was arguably the main character of the series, Surgeon Breeze, two other rookies, and Frenno's friends, Nex and Evo, who are introduced in the 2.0 era, and Raka, who acted as Frenno's rival. Hero Cores act as a battery-powered soul for the heroes. Represented by a giant glowing H on the chest, Hero Cores contain the personality and knowledge of each hero. Starting with Breakout, Hero Cores would be used to carry codes on the back of them that you could redeem in LEGO's online Hero Factory games. This is why villains in Breakout and Brain Attack came with Hero Cores. The launch wave of Hero Factory was known as Rise of the Rookies. The story surrounds up-and-coming Hero Ferno as he tries to prove himself to the Alpha Team leader, Stormer. Meanwhile, a villain named Von Nebula tries to get his revenge on Stormer. The Von Ness mission was when hero Von Ness betrayed the Hero Factory by fleeing a mission 
while his commanding officer was injured. Ordeal of Fire was the second wave of Hero Factory and introduced the CCBS system. The story follows Alpha Team encountering a group of villains called the Fire Villains who have the ability to absorb energy. After Surge sacrifices himself to allow the other heroes to escape, they return to the Hero Factory and get an upgrade known as the 2.0 upgrade. Alpha Team returns to the fight with newcomers Nex and Evo joining them, and they defeat the Fire Villains and rescue Surge. Savage Planet starts with newcomer Rucka receiving a distress signal from a nearby planet called Quatros. He is then ambushed by the villain Witch Doctor, who is using Quatro Spikes to control the animals on Quatros. And Alpha Team is sent to rescue Rucka while dressed in their fursuits. Breakout is considered to be Hero Factory at its best. The story starts with a villain named Voltix creating a blackout allowing all the villains in the Hero Factory facility to escape. This causes every single hero to go on a personal mission to recapture one villain each. Meanwhile, it's revealed that the breakout was a front for the villain Black Phantom to sneak in and steal the plans for the entire Hero Factory. Brain Attack starts with a scientist sending a bunch of sentient brains down to the planet where the Hero Factory resides. The brains infect to control a bunch of passive monsters all over the planet to attack Makihiro City. A tunnel being dug releases a bunch of giant monsters into the city. The heroes respond by building giant mech suits to fight the monsters. I already talked a bit about Alpha Team, but there are other teams that are canonically in the series, such as Beta and Omega Team. The heroes are shown using mini pods to fly around the galaxy called hero pods in the show. And these pods kinda look like the containers that the 1 through 3.0 heroes come in. And a fairly well known fact is that you can put your hero back into their container and effectively give them a hero pod. There are two known Hero Factory DVDs, a Rise of the Rookies DVD released in 2010, and a Savage Plant DVD released in 2011. And the Ordeal of Fire episode was released as a bonus feature on the Savage Planet DVD. There's also a rumor of a Breakout and Brain Attack mini-movie collection, but as far as I can tell it's fake, and I'll get into why later on in the video. There was also a Hero Factory comic book series published by DC Comics. Unfortunately, it seems that the comic was cancelled after Savage Planet, and I can't find earlier issues anywhere on the internet. There were also Hero Factory chapter books. Written by legendary Bionicle writer Greg Farshti, the books used characters that the show didn't, such as Koronter, and through what I could tell, they were really good. Zib is the primary mission director, and Quaddle is his assistant. Mr. Makuru is the creator and founder of the Hero Factory. Most sets have official combination models. These figures are displayed on the back of the boxes, with one exception. And you know what? It's probably a good thing that Lucas Fowler isn't on the back of the 1.0 boxes, because what in the actual fuck am I looking at? I mean, I think this thing would make me less likely to buy one of the sets. Remember what I said earlier about the canisters? Well, the main function of the dropship is being able to do this. In the second episode of Rise of the Rookies, Bulk, Stringer, and Surge perform what's known as a Hero Cell. But the reason it's on the list in the first place is because there are these small holes under the Hero Cores of the 1.0 Heroes. And you can almost fit a tube in them, performing your own Hero Cell yourself. Hero Recon Team was an official Hero Builder program where you could 
build and customize your own hero and then later purchase it. There was an exclusive dual molded chest plate that you could only get through the Hero Recon team. And I, I kind of regret not getting one myself because goddamn these things are impossible to find. Also at the end of the breakout episode, it's revealed that Raka is a member of the Hero Recon team. When Stormer XL vs. Speed of Demon was announced, I was only wondering one thing. How the hell is making Stormer Fat allow him to keep up with a guy on a motorcycle? Well, when the breakout episode came back, the answer was... Just give him a blue for a bike. Unfortunately, making a show-accurate bike would be impossible due to the fact that many of the recolors shown just don't exist. And in case you're curious, this is what Stormer XL looks like on the Ferno bike. In Ordeal of Fire, Evo had an Asian accent and a very calm monk-like personality. When Evo returned in Breakout, he was turned into a naive rookie. As far as I can tell, there's no official explanation for this, but there are some theories that I'll get into later in this iceberg. A common issue with a lot of the Hero Factory sets, specifically with the heroes, is that a lot of them only came with one hand. Starting with the 1.0 sets and those stupid, awful, ugly, hollow arms, most of the 2.0 and 3.0 sets just had one of the hands replaced with a weapon. I think the worst example of this is Breakout because of the weapon piece being used. For some unknown reason, LEGO decided that a handful of Breakout heroes would just have one hand, despite the fact that the blaster they used could fit a hand in it. And finally, in Brain Attack. Freno XL was the only hero set to not have both hands in all of Brain Attack. I'm not going to get into Invasion from Below because those are mech suits and they're very different. But if you're curious, there is one character who has had both hands in their set, and it's Breeze. Another common criticism that Hero Factory sets got were the open backs of the sets. Starting in Breakout, LEGO would start using feet as kind of a back armor plate for the bigger sets. Breakout Stringer's weapon kind of looks like a guitar. I guess it's just a neat little detail for the sound-based hero to have a guitar as a weapon. In the third episode of Rise of the Rookies, Stormer gets infected with nanobots that turn him evil for the rest of the episode. And in Brain Attack, Surge gets infected and possessed by one of the evil brains. This shows that heroes can be taken over and controlled. Maybe there are some sleeper agents in the Hero Factory. Maybe we've already seen one. In Invasion from Below, seven of the Alpha Team members got minifigures. In the show, it appears that the minifigures are using a CCBS build. However, making some of these would be impossible due to the fact that they use size 4 armor, which do not exist in blue, green, or red. During the Von Nest mission, a location called New Stellic City is attacked by a giant drone. The drone injures Team Leader Thresher, causing Von Nest to flee in fear. Stormer manages to single-handedly take down the drone, and it's later used as a statue in commemoration of Stormer's actions. It's also unknown where this drone came from. Breakout is the last time that Nex and Stringer are seen in the series. It's unknown why, though a popular theory is that it's due to lack of popularity of the characters' sets. In the third episode of Rise of the Rookies, it's revealed that Breeze can talk to animals. And in Brain Attack, it's again stated that she can talk to animals, though she refuses for obvious reasons. And Breeze being able to talk to animals is one of the biggest plot points in Invasion from Below. It makes it kind of dumb that you have this character established to be able to talk to animals and you don't bring her to the Savage Planet. Stormer 2.0, Evo 2.0, and Fangs use minifigure spears. Though, for some reason, these spears are made out of a soft rubber material. My personal theory is that LEGO didn't want kids stabbing each other with these spears. 
And Breakout Rock uh, did have minifigure spears, though these were made out of the regular plastic. In Breakout, Black Phantom uses anti quasar to shut down mission commanders. It's unknown how he got these powers, but after Breakout, it's never mentioned again. It's no surprise that a show based on a toy doesn't portray the toys particularly accurately. The most obvious one are the backs of figures being covered. Raka is always portrayed with golden hands despite the fact that golden CCBS hands don't exist. In Rise of the Rookies, Breeze has a yellow head and core instead of red. In Rise of the Rookies, Bulk for some reason has a blue hero core. And in the Savage Planet special, Witch Doctor has a completely black chest instead of a completely white chest, and his quasar spikes are upside down. Tom Kenny, most well known for being the voice of SpongeBob, voiced Evo in Ordeal of Fire and Raka in Savage Planet Breakout and Brain Attack. I bring this up not only because I think it's worth pointing out that LEGO at one point did care enough about the series to bring in top tier voice actors. I also heard a theory that the reason for Evo's personality change was because they couldn't get the original voice actor, but I just proved that wrong. Mark Hamill, best known for playing Luke Skywalker and the best Joker ever, fucking fight me, voices Von Nebula and Black Phantom in the series. In the breakout episode, three villains didn't appear, those villains being Core Hunter, XT4, and Thornrax. 2010's Bulk and Vapor was the only limited edition set in Hero Factory. It was also only one out of two two-pack sets in the series, the other one being Queen Beast. There are also a handful of set bundles released for the 2.0 and 3.0 series. There were a handful of polybags released for the theme. Most of them were just spare parts, but the Brain Attack one gave us an exclusive black brain. And the Invasion from Below ones were just full-on mini sets. So if you go to look up the Savage Planet episode on YouTube, you'll find part one and nothing else. For whatever reason, the second part of the Savage Planet special is just nowhere to be found. Earlier this year, I uploaded the full movie, but LEGO took it down. Which, I mean, is completely fair because it's just a straight-up pirated movie. And earlier today, when I'm recording this, someone found Part 2 in a different language. Maybe Savage Planet Part 2 was just buried in LEGO's YouTube channel, but I somehow doubt that. I will have a link in the description to an unlisted Savage Planet full movie, but if that link goes down, then don't expect me to upload it a third time. Near the end of the Brain Attack episode, Surge sends an army of blank heroes down to attack the rest of the heroes. The interesting thing about this is the fact that these blank heroes function as perfectly normal robots despite the fact they have no core, meaning that the hero core is not in fact the power source of a hero. In the beginning of Savage Planet, we see a Raka 2.0, and later on we see a Bulk and Stringer 2.0. Now the designs for these figures aren't really anything that special, it's literally just their 3.0 models with the 2.0 skullcap pasted on, though for whatever reason they gave Raka a completely unique headgear that isn't seen on any other set. And, in the Breakout episode, Stringer is seen using his 1.0 weapon as a regular gun. The containers for the 1.0 heroes were autographed in canon by the characters themselves, revealing their first names. The 2.0 heroes didn't have such autographs, so you would need to go onto the Hero Factory website to find out that next in Evo's games were Julius and Nathan. Raka had no such thing. The way that you would find out his first name is if you look in the credits of an episode he was in. 
and there you would see that the character is named Daniel Rocca. Uh, okay, quick correction. Uh, he's only credited as Daniel Rocca in Savage Planet and Brain Attack. In Breakout, he's just called Rocca. In the beginning of the Brain Attack episode, Bulk and Breeze are seen in their 2.0 forms as opposed to their Breakout forms. My best guess as to why this is the case is because the studio didn't feel like making a breakout Bulgan breakout breeze model that they would discard five minutes later. Though for some reason Breeze's printed armor piece is just a solid green armor piece. Okay, this is only on here because not a lot of people seem to know this and I keep getting into fights about it. In the beginning of the Brain Attack episode, when we see a Wild Scarox pre-possession, there is no Stinger, there are no Pincers, this thing is not a Scorpion. And when we look at Scarox's face, it looks more spider-like than anything else, despite the fact it still only had six legs. Okay, there's actually a lot to cover here, so I'm just going to cover it as quickly and comprehensively as I can. 2010 had two games. A villain silhouette creator that I only remember because of how lame it was. And another game called Mission Von Nebula. This game would have you create a hero and go through a bunch of stages taking down villains from the 2010 wave. I never really liked this game because it was very hard and annoying. 2011 saw the release of Hero Recon Team, which some people would consider to be a game on its own. 2011 also had Mission Ordeal of Fire, which was just Mission Von Nebula with a 2.0 skin slapped on. The hero builder in this game was just Hero Recon Team. There was also a simple side-scrolling beat-em-up called Creep Crushers. This game is important because it features MinionBot17, who has the most tragic backstory out of any fictional character you can name. Savage Planet also had their own versions of Mission Von Nebula and Creep Crushers. Next up is Breakout with something actually a little more interesting. The Breakout game was kind of a pseudo-adventure beat-em-up platformer. The game would follow each hero during the Breakout while they go and recapture their designated villain. Well, at least everyone except Nex. The game also featured some fairly extensive customizability so you could modify each hero to your heart's content or just straight up turn each hero into your own original character. Brain Attack was an over-the-head shooter where an original character and a member of Alpha Team roamed the streets of Makahiro and disposed of stray brains. And finally, Invasion from Below was a run-and-gun shooter. The gameplay I saw featured the guy jumping through the floor, so that's always fun. Breeze and Thornrax were Breakout Wave 1 sets, everywhere except for the United States. It's just straight up unknown why these two sets were singled out to be released in the United States during Wave 2. So in the beginning of Breakout, we can see Waspix just chilling out in a jail cell. And after all the villains get released, we can see Fangs and Scorpio running towards the portal. I mean, clearly this is just the animators repurposing those assets to make the jail cell look more full. As evident by the fact that these animals still have their quasar spikes. Or maybe there's just some unknown story where a dog just tries to rob a bank or some like crazy shit like that. There is a fair amount of merch for the series outside of the sets, of course. Here I have this amazing Ferno Rolex. This Fire Lord Half Ruler. There's also this Brain Attack keychain. But I think the weirdest are these Legoland chest plates and skull caps. I seriously wonder if anyone actually has these, like, in current day, 10 years after they released. Like, is it just cheap, shitty foam that has completely worn down over the past decade? So I've already talked about how in 2011 all the action figure joints got redesigned to be more durable with CCBS. And that redesign came with a new version of these little guys. For some 
unknown reason, Jetbug comes with the pre-CCBS socket joints instead of the CCBS socket joints. I didn't like just swap all my parts out, this is just how the set comes. Pretty much every review of Jetbug points this out. In Savage Planet, Breeze 2.0 and Surge 2.0 can be seen when Witch Doctor gets exiled right here. Jang Bricks, formerly known as LEGO Jang, is one of, if not the most popular LEGO content creators on YouTube. He started out doing a variety of things, but really started to gain an audience with his mocks and reviews of Hero Factory sets. Unfortunately, due to Kappa, Jang has been forced to delete the comments of all those old videos, but the reviews themselves are still up. Baby Yoda? Nah, get that shit out of here. Baby Toxic Reaper is where it's at, my guy. In the breakout episode, Toxic Reaper's ultimate goal is to collect an army of babies. Though, Evo stops them before we get to see what they actually look like. Fortunately for us, the breakout game has us covered. They look like Toxic Reaper's head with spider legs. So apparently that's how that works. So this is more of a theory that I don't really have hard numbers to back up. He was the final character introduced, and despite this fact, he is tied with Stormer for second place of most set appearances. We have 3.0, XL, Breakout, Brain Attack, this horrible thing, and three minifigures making nine appearances. And in case you're curious, the first placeholder is Ferno with 1.0, Ferno Bike, 2.0, 3.0, Breakout, Ferno XL, and three minifigure appearances. Explode has become a millionaire many times over and every inhabited planet within 10,000 light years has issued a warrant for his arrest. Von Nebula often hired Explode for interesting missions. At one point, Von Nebula appointed Rotor to be Explode's assistant to keep the former in line. So, easily the objectively worst thing about Hero Factory are the three unresolved cliffhangers that the series has. At the end of Breakout, we learn that Von Nebula, or someone who looks extremely like him, gains the plans to the Hero Factory. At the end of Brantac, we see a bunch of brains in what appears to be a sewer. And at the end of Invasion from Below, one of the jumpers is on the hero ship. Fortunately for you, I smoked enough dope to understand what's really going on. The plans to the Hero Factory are used to create the brains, and the creatures from below are the brains that just live in the sewer. Gore Hunter comes with this belt, and when the set first released, no one really knew what it was for. Later on, it was discovered that you're actually supposed to put hero cores on that belt. Which, when you think about it, is kind of disturbing. Like, imagine if LEGO just released an action figure of a serial killer who just puts the hearts of his victims on his chest as a trophy. As I mentioned earlier, Evo had a completely different personality when he returned for Breakout. A popular theory is that Evo had his hero core replaced. In the second episode, it is stated that if a hero has their core replaced, their body would be fine, but their mind would be completely reset. Maybe something happened to Evo off-screen in between Ordeal of Fire and Breakout. Or maybe there was a behind-the-scenes reason for this. Oh boy. So I just want to put a disclaimer, uh, I'm not accusing anyone at LEGO of being actively racist. As far as I'm concerned, this is all unintentional and this has absolutely nothing to do with why EVO was changed, but I feel like there's enough to actually talk about. As I mentioned earlier, when EVO was introduced, he had an Asian accent and a very calm monk-like personality. And you might be asking what the problem is. The problem is, Evo is yellow. And for those of you who don't know, calling Asian people yellow people is kinda racist. 
But like I said, there's no hard proof that this is the reason Evo got changed. As far as we know, LEGO just didn't want to pay Tom Kenny to voice him again. So I'm just browsing YouTube one night watching a bunch of official Hero Factory media trying to relive my childhood because the pandemic just gave me nothing better to do. And I come across this on LEGO's official YouTube channel. Through what I can gather, these are officially licensed fan animations. Back in 2012, Universal Studios bought the movie rights to Hero Factory. Development of the project is unknown, and in 2014 it was quietly put down. Also, I found Big Gay Picture Show, but that has nothing to do with anything, I just thought it was funny. However, Universal having those rights is stopping the release of... Back in 2016, a famous Bionicle artist and Owo man Christian Faber made a blog post about the end of Hero Factory. Now, this blog post covered a lot of behind-the-scenes information that I'll be sure to cover later on in this video, but what I want to focus on is the HF Story Bible. Faber has expressed interest in releasing the Story Bible, however he has yet to do so due to the rights being tangled up between Universal and LEGO. Realistically, I think it's only a matter of time before this gets released because I don't see Universal holding on to the rights to a dead LEGO IP. Back around 2013-2014, this image started circulating around the internet. The image has a very similar look to a bunch of other leaked Hero Factory sets, so people thought it was real at first. Obviously this is fake, and this cowboy theme never became a reality. When a rookie hero was dispatched on a mission involving hero pods, Von Nebula ordered Minibot 17 to kill the hero. The henchbot tried telling Von Nebula that it was his birthday, though Von Nebula refused to listen. So I can fully man up and admit when I was wrong about something. In the first part of this video, in the first upload, I said that I do not believe that the Brain Attack and Breakout mini movie collection exists. Someone showed me a picture of them having it, so it is in fact a real product that exists. However, I don't believe that this is an actual product that LEGO released. When you look up the DVD, you will find dead links for an online listing of it. I can't find anything about this actually being released on any reputable LEGO sites. When you look at the box art for Savage Planet and Rise of the Rookies, it uses completely custom renders of the characters. But when you look at this mini movie collection, it uses set art, which is completely different. It also doesn't really make sense for LEGO to release something like this because Breakout and Brain Attack were immediately available on YouTube and are still there to this day. My best guess as to why people have this is because it's a bootleg that just kind of circulated around the internet. Back on old Bionicle mock forms, making a mock using purple or teal used to be something of a status symbol due to those parts being very rare. There's also this old leaked promo of EVO 2.0 having blue instead of purple. It may be possible that LEGO decided to change EVO's blue to purple to appease the Bionicle fans that had decided to completely ignore and reject Hero Factory's debut wave. Alright, I got like two and a half pages of notes here, so I'm not going to go too in-depth of everything here. 
first we have this beta design for Ferno that Christian Paper leaked on his blog post. Uh, I'm not too big of a fan of this one, it looks more like a guy in spandex than it does a crime fighting robot. Uh, next up are some villain designs. I'm not a big fan of the way this rock golem looks and this cloaked guy kind of looks like he's straight out from Destiny, but the rest of them look pretty cool. I already talked about this picture, Eva's the only one that looks any different. Uh, Drill Dozer, Nitro Blast, and Jet Pug look pretty much the same, with the only real difference being that their printed armor is replaced with a trans red piece of armor. Also, you can see that Jetbug is using those 2008 joints, and Nitro Blast is using a 2009 hand. Fire Lord, on the other hand, looks way different, and in my opinion, way better. It looks like he wouldn't have relied as hardly on a Technic build, and I like this claw hand design. I think that looks really cool. In the box art behind this Witch Doctor figure, you can see that Witch Doctor used to have a longer staff, which I wish they would have kept, because that's really the only big problem with that set is how short the staff is. The only notable breakout Wave 1 prototype I found was this Black Phantom, which is only notable because it looks so skinny and bad. There is a picture for every single breakout Wave 2 set, so I'm going to start with next, who looks like an unfinished 2.0 mock. XT4 is kind of weird. His arms look like they're just kind of made out of pre-bent Technic pieces, and it looks like he uses some old Bionicle Borak uh, claws. Gorunter is pretty strange looking. He uses orange instead of red. He's got this black meltdown head on his shoulder, and he has a, his trophy belt, except this time it's covered in heads. Bulk looks pretty decent. Uh, I'm not a big fan of all the random stuff on him, but I do like the way the shoulders look. I do like this helmet. Uh, and weirdly enough, it looks like the guns that uh, the Breakout Heroes would have had would have been Hero Cuff launchers instead of them just picking them up and throwing them. Voltix looks really cool, and I honestly think this looks much better than the set that we got. It's got these shoulder pads that are still, to this day, only coming Drill Dozer. Uh, he's got way more purple on him, including the 1.0 feet, and I love these electric pieces. Stringer is very interesting looking. His helmet looks like LEGO tried turning his original helmet into 2.0 headgear. Uh, his bones are all orange. He's got Stormer 2.0 weapon just slapped onto his gun for some reason. Speed of Demon is pretty weird. Uh, I'm not at all a fan of how this looks. It looks like they just put way too much armor on the figure and the bike is just covered in Technic gaps. And finally, Stormer XL. I think this one looks marginally better than the official set we got. Uh, I definitely think it looks much better slimmed down. Uh, the only thing I'm not too big on are the triple jointed arms that he has. At the end of Savage Planet, Ferno Nex and Raka find a cave with a bunch of discarded hero armor. According to Zib earlier on in the episode, mining has been halted for decades. And next was the first generation of heroes built with this armor. I bring this up because that discarded armor looks exactly like the post 2.0 armor, which means Savage Planet takes place literal decades after Ordeal of Fire. Again, from Christian Faber's blog post. The last HF episode, Invasion from Below, became uh, the most watched piece of content on LEGO's website the year it came out. At the same time, it marked the end of the short life of Hero Factory. It was criticized for a lot of different reasons, but here are a few personal views on this battered factory. Invasion from Below was made on a very low budget by Ghost and Advance, who made the original Bionicle animations. The episode was a struggle, because the storyline got changed dramatically during production. It was definitely meant to be continued, because the Queen wasn't gone, and the case wasn't closed for HF. The voice actor change was done for budget reasons, because we didn't have the budget to get the original voice actors. So yeah, they go cheap down on Vision from below. So yeah, my awful reading aside, uh, it just turns out that LEGO just kept cutting HF's budget down for Invasion from Below until we got whatever this is. 
So if we ignore what Christian Faber just said in that blog post, this is how Invasion from Below actually ends. The heroes launch a pod into the queen and her nest, uh, into a void, and as established earlier by the dumbest fucking scene ever, the void is full with acid. With the exception of that one cocoon that somehow got in the hero's ship, the entire species is dead. They've just been knocked into a void of acid. Alright, this is from the Hero Factory wiki. Uh, Rotor's homeworld is pursuing him for treason due to crimes he has committed at some point. The planet has given him the death penalty and he will be disassembled if he returns there. Yes, this is real. This is Rotor's actual canon backstory. Raka X Hero Factory Dog is an infamous fanfiction between Raka and this dog seen in the Hero Factory trailers. It was made on the Hero Factory Discord and is so heinous, so infamous, that we ended up getting rid of the fanfiction section because it was scaring away new users. I'm not gonna actually read the damn thing because I don't want my voice narrating bestiality fanfic. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna leave with this uh, one very important message. Uh, don't fuck your dogs. Alright, and that's actually going to be it for the video. I'm sorry for the uh, bad quality. I'm currently at work uh, finishing everything up. Um, the reason part two kind of took a long time to come out was because uh, I kind of erased everything from my phone, which included the script and the voice lines and uh, a lot of the images that I used. Um, so that, 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 that's taken care of now, but uh, I'll leave links in the description to the subreddit and the Discord. Uh, join the Discord at your own risk. Uh, subreddit is pretty clean, pretty friendly. Discord is a more cursed energy, but uh, yeah. Uh, hope you enjoyed.